This object is called a Boyle surface, and it wasn't supposed to exist. Or at least, one of the mathematicians of all time, David Hilbert, believed it wouldn't exist. He was so sure of the impossibility of this object that he set the proof of its non-existence as a problem to one of his PhD students, Werner Boy. But instead of proving its non-existence, Mr. Boy gave a mathematical construction of one in a paper published 1901, and these objects are named Boy surfaces after him. In a sec, I'll show you how to crochet one of these surfaces yourself, and also explain more about what a Boy surface is, as well as talk about the people involved in its story. To make one, you'll need a crochet hook, and ideally a reasonable amount of four different colours of yarn. I'll link the yarn that I bought below. Now start by tying a slip knot, and then making a long foundation chain. I made one of length 75, but actually I ended up running out of yarn faster than I wanted, so I'd recommend doing it a bit shorter. Like about 70 or so. Now I'm going to activate my hyperspeed crochet abilities, but you'll probably have to do it at regular speed, like a chump. The red yarn will be used to make a base, to which we'll later attach the other colours. This base will actually be a Mobius strip, but a pretty special type of Mobius strip. Normally, a Mobius strip would be made by taking a rectangular strip, twisting one end by a half twist, and then joining the ends back together but we'll be twisting by three half twists. At the end of the foundation chain, add one extra turning chain and then turn the work around. Then work in a single crochet, in US terms, all the way back to get a thin rectangular strip. So Dave Hilbert was wrong about the existence of boy surface, but he wasn't often wrong about stuff. He's probably most widely known for his infinite hotel, but he has a body of work which is still hugely influential in lots of different areas of maths and physics. In mathematics, he did foundational work in logic, abstract algebra, and algebraic geometry. And he was around for the two great developments of modern physics, relativity and quantum mechanics, and he was keen on putting the theories on solid mathematical footing, saying physics is getting too hard for the physicists. Now Hilbert spaces are one of the central notions of quantum mechanics. There's an urban legend that he once attended a seminar given by a colleague on Hilbert spaces, and after the lecture, Hilbert had to raise his hand to ask what Hilbert space was. In relativity, Hilbert gave a formulation of general relativity from the action principle, and now the Einstein-Hilbert action bears his name along with Albert Einstein, a guy who you might have heard of. We've made it back and we've got a strip which is roughly 2 by 70. The next step we've got to be a bit careful, because as I said earlier, you want to join the ends after putting in exactly 3 half turns. So this is a half turn, where the strip twists round so that the side on the bottom faces up after the twist. Do 3 of these and then flatten out the rest of the strip, and then join the ends together. You should still have one loop on the hook, so to do the join you can put the hook through both holes on either side of the strip, then yarn over and pull through both, and now you have two loops on the hook, so yarn over and pull through like you're doing a single crochet, and then do the same again at the bottom of the join. Now's a good time to check whether you've done the three twists right, and the way to check it is to lay the strip down as flat as possible so that there's only three turns, and as you follow the strip along, at each turn it'll either flip over or flip under, and if you've done it right, then it should be flipping the same way at each turn. So here, following the strip round clockwise, it's always flipping over. It's a bit clearer at the first two turns, which are a bit sharper. Next, you have a loop on the hook, and you should be on one side of the strip. So now start doing single crochet along it. A fun thing about crocheting along a Mobius strip this way is that as you go around, you'll end up on the other side. Now, keep putting in rows until when you lay the strip flat, there's no longer a hole in the middle. I pretty much used an entire ball of wool here, so this step takes a while, 
And if you're following along, it's time to grab someone nearby to entertain you or find a nice long video essay. So I'm just going to talk about crochet for a bit. So I started a couple of months ago, but the reason I started was because of the book Crochet Adventures with Hyperbolic Planes. And shout out to Dana Taimina for writing the book. And it's actually such a great book because it makes hyperbolic geometry accessible. And, and hyperbolic geometry is definitely one of the toughest fundamental notions in abstract geometry. I think crochet is a really nice medium for bringing surfaces to life. Because other options could be like making paper models or if you have access to one, a 3D printer. But crochet is not very expensive to get into in terms of money or time. And it also gives more flexibility than paper. Like it's a lot easier to dictate how a crocheted surface is going to bend. And you can make crocheted surfaces look like they're self-intersecting, which is going to be really important later. And that's a lot tougher to do with paper models. I've finished the yarn, so now I'll just tie off and then flatten out the strip, which is now very thick. Notice that you kind of get a hexagon shape subdivided into three parallelograms, or even further into six triangles, so that alternating triangles have one layer or two layers. The shape also has a nice threefold rotational symmetry. If I rotate it by 120 degrees, I get the same shape back. At the turns, you kind of get these pockets where you can slip between the layers. And the idea of the next step is to attach on a parallelogram of crochet in a way that extends this pocket. Now get one of the other colours and pick out one of the pocket sides. Starting off is the hardest part. So start at the centre, picking one of the holes in the base strip near the centre and putting the hook through it. Then yarn over and pull through. And now you've got one loop on the hook. So then you can do a single crochet along the pocket side. At the end of the row, instead of a turning chain, do a single crochet into the side of the strip, and then turn around, add another row, and again, turn around by putting a single crochet into the side. This stage is kind of a bit improvisational, as sometimes at the sides you need to skip a hole to keep the shape consistent. Do this along the parallelogram until you reach the side of the hexagon. Now what makes boy's surface interesting is that it represents the real projective plane, sometimes abbreviated as RP2. So this is a way to see projective geometry very concretely. And a boy surface is a specific realization of RP2 in three-dimensional space called an immersion. To explain what an immersion is, it's useful to think about a closely related surface, the Klein bottle. There's a couple of videos where people actually make glass Klein bottles in real life, and one interesting feature of them is that they cut into themselves. This is a self-intersection. Now an immersion is allowed to have self-intersections, but otherwise they're pretty smooth. Actually though, a lot of these Klein bottles are cheating. You can tell they're cheating if the liquid passes through the self-intersection, because there should be a part of the surface blocking the liquid from entering the bottle. But I can't criticise too much because I'm actually going to cheat in a very similar way. Though we won't see the self-intersection until later. So what is the real projective plane? One way to refer to it is as the space of lines in three dimensions that pass through the origin. But from this description, it's not clear at all that this is a surface or that it should be described as a plane. So how can we geometrize it? Well, if we have a sphere centered at the origin, we can try to parametrize the space of lines by the points where each line hits the sphere. 
So each line hits the sphere in exactly two points, which are opposite one another. These are called pairs of antipodal points. For example, a completely vertical line hits the sphere at the north and south pole. So this is a more geometric description. RP2 is like a sphere, but antipodal points represent the same point in RP2. So this gives us a 2 to 1 map, but ideally we want a 1 to 1 map. We can get closer to a 1 to 1 map by thinking about where lines hit the hemisphere. Most lines hit the upper hemisphere exactly once, but lines which hit the equatorial circle hit the equator at antipodal points of the circle. So it's still 2 to 1 on the equator. And there is no 1 to 1 map, which is why Werner Boy and now we have done all this work to find an immersion which is as close to a one-to-one -one map as is possible. Once you reach the edge of the hexagon, tie off and cut the string. Now one of the parallelograms has been covered by a rectangle of fabric. The rectangle kind of deforms the shape a bit, but it's easier to do than trying to crochet on a parallelogram. It should be attached at three sides, but with an opening lip at the edge of the hexagon. Now we're going to flip over to the other side, where we instead attach a triangle. And now one edge of the triangle is going to attach directly onto the surface of the base strip, representing the self-intersection. It's important to know exactly which triangle to focus on. If these are the two triangles which have orange on the other side, then focus on this triangle here. We're going to start from the middle again, but instead of going along the edge, we're going to work outwards. I'll skip to the middle of this process where it's a bit clearer where we're heading. So here I've made some progress on the triangle. See that it attaches to the edge of the base strip on one side, but attaches directly to the surface of the strip on the other. Once you're practically at the edge of the hexagon, and at the far corner of the triangle, then I'll join together the two openings at the edge of the hexagon. Before doing this, it's nice to look at the edge and see exactly where the self-intersection occurs. Then do a final row connecting the two lips of orange at the edge of the hexagon. And the next steps will be doing the same thing we did with the orange colour, but with the other two colours, and rotate it along so that the shape we make has threefold symmetry. I'll just speed up those parts because they're exactly the same as before, but you might have to push the non-base colours out of the way to access the base strip. Now there should be a row of the non-base colours running all the way around the outside of the hexagon, and the last step is to essentially join a hexagon of crochet to this row along its outside edge. But to make it more colourful, we'll split it into three parallelograms, and there's a natural way to do this. For example, starting with orange, pick an edge of the hexagon, then start putting in rows, and as you add rows, only attach the new crochet to the other orange edge, leaving the other side free, and when you get to the end row, leave that free as well. Do this for the other two colours, except attaching to the new parallelogram or parallelograms when appropriate. One final interesting feature of Boy's surface, or RP2, is that it's not orientable, a feature that it shares with the Mobius strip and the Klein bottle. Some consequences of this are the fact that it has self-intersections, as we saw earlier, and also that there's no choice of inside or outside. By the time we finish, the object will have no edges, but if we start from what seems like the inside, in fact we can take a path to end up on the outside of the shape. And now we have a boy surface. This is pretty different from my previous videos, but I hope you enjoyed learning about this bizarre object and seeing one being created and even that you'll make one yourself. If you enjoyed it, it'll help me out a lot if you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.